everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video we're going to talk about common reasons people miss veins whenever they're drawing blood and especially starting IVs. Now if you are a new nurse, you will probably face this dilemma unless you've been in the healthcare setting and you've been exposed to this type of skill. Because starting IVs and drawing blood, it is a skill that you learn. And in nursing school, my nursing school anyways, we really weren't given a lot of opportunities to practice and practice IVs. It was something that I learned as a new nurse how to do. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some reasons why, why you miss, and I'm gonna go over how to increase your success rate. Because whenever you're working as a nurse, one of the things that you must know how to do is to get an IV, because you can't always depend on someone to do it for you, especially if the IV's blown on you and you gotta get the patient um, to get, get a test because they're getting a CT with P protocol and you gotta get an 18 in the AC, or you have an antibiotic that needs to be given, or the patient's in pain and they need some IV medication, and everyone's busy. So it's a skill that you just have to have. So what I wanna do, um, first let's go over the reasons why people miss. Um, one of the biggest reasons, especially for me whenever I first started out as a nurse, was that I didn't really know how all the supplies worked because you have butterflies, you have straight needles like this one, then you have a saline flush and then you have the part that you connect and you flush with the connector and there's just so much to do with one hand after you actually stick the patient so what I recommend is that you really learn your supplies and one thing that a lot of people have trouble with I want to show you this is that whenever they're starting the IV see on the IV you have this plastic cannula that's what you're seeing right there and um, once you hit the vein, you get a nice flash of blood in here, you'll see red. And that's great, you hit the vein, but that's not the whole part to it. You have to slide this cannula into the vein. And that's a big thing that messes a lot of people up. I know I have lost a lot of IVs because I couldn't slide this in. How to use your supplies, take it out, play with it. See how it works because that's going to increase your success rate. Next, um, you pick too small of a vein. <clears throat> Whenever you're first starting out, you really, number one, you don't know where to look. And you don't know, whenever you see a vein, you're like, hey, that works, I found a vein. But you have to make sure that it's big enough. It's going to hold the cannula size that you're going to insert. And um, that it's going to hold if you're going to be giving a lot of fluids, if you're going to be giving Vescant drugs like vinegarin, amiodarone, or things like that, that it's going to work. So you have to know to pick a good vein. Next, you don't know where to look. Um, especially when you're first starting out, it's like, well, I see a lot of patients with them in their AC, so that must be the place to work. But there's a lot of great other places on the arm to look just um, other than the AC. Um, you didn't prepare the vein properly. The key to being very successful at getting your IV is that you've got to make that vein go from flat to puff it up because it's hard to hit something that's flat and not engorge than it is to hit something that's literally popping right at you. So in my previous videos, I've really talked about that. I've talked about putting the tourniquet on. I um, have a video on how to properly put on a tourniquet because this is going to cause resistance and increase the blood or decrease the blood flow to your arm so it's going to cause all the blood to pull in that vein and really puff it up and then also once you get the vein engorged if it's a rolling vein which we just covered that how to stabilize it and um, one tip is that especially in hand veins because they like to roll you want to hold your finger above the insertion point and just sort of pull it a little bit taunt before you actually go in so the vein won't roll to the side and move on you. Um, another reason is, like I said, the vein rolled or it blew. Usually what happens whenever it blows, this can happen on anyone. Um, some reasons is maybe you shouldn't use a tourniquet. If you get men who are really cardio um, athletic, they work out, they run a lot, they have beautiful veins and typically if that vein is already puffed up there you don't have you have to use a tourniquet because when you're using a tourniquet you're already putting so much resistance on that vein that whenever you go to poke it with a needle it's in a sense like you're poking a balloon and it's too much pressure on it it's just going to sort of just collapse and 
or you've picked too small of a vein again and it just couldn't hold that saline flush that you have to flush in behind it. So you wanna make sure that um, you try to prevent that from happening. Next, the biggest thing is having no confidence. Um, starting IVs is 10% skill and it's 90% mental. I remember whenever I first started out as a nurse, the first year I was horrible at IVs. I got to a point where I would literally just call someone and say, hey, I need an IV because I knew if I went in there and tried to start it, I wouldn't get it. But then after a while, I was forced, I was like, Sarah, you've got to learn how to do this. So I started doing it, started increasing my success rate. I started talking with other nurses, asking them for tips of how to increase my success rate and I started getting them. And once I started getting all my IVs, I have like a 95 to 98% success rate. And so once I started getting them, my confidence went up and it was really hard for me to miss a vein. So it's all about what you think about yourself up in here. And last but not least, some patients just don't have anything. And this is what you need to look for. If a patient is a diabetic, has congestive heart failure, renal failure, has had chemo in the past, or they've been an IV drug user, they may be really hard to stick for drawing blood or for getting an IV. And these patients may be a candidate for a central line, which you'll have to get a doctor's order for. But um, keep that in mind. So don't bum yourself out. If you're working on a renal floor or if you're working on a congestive heart failure floor, just know that those patients have really limited access for veins. So don't beat yourself up. Now let's talk about how to increase your success rate. Okay, when to use a tourniquet and when not to use a tourniquet. Remember how I talked about with blowing veins? Um, if they had real, if the veins were already engorged and big already, you don't need to use a tourniquet because like I said, it's like taking a needle to a balloon, it's gonna pop. So don't use a tourniquet on those. But sometimes some people don't use the tourniquets correctly they put it on too loose they don't get that vein popped up because one of the biggest things is making sure that vein is visible for you to see or to feel and i really recommend that the best way to learn how to fill veins is to feel on yourself or a boyfriend a wife or whoever because you've got a vein feels like some it specifically has a feeling to it compared to like a tendon or an or like a nerve or some tissue. So what I recommend is that maybe you get a tourniquet, make a little tourniquet, and just feel on your own veins. Get the feeling of how it feels because that's really how you start them is by where you feel it's at. Next, um, another thing of helping get that um, vein engorged is that you want that person to dangle their arm and pump their fist because that's increasing um, resistance like putting a, taking a water hose that has water running to it and kinking it and that water hose is going to start to swell. That's like the same concept of what's happening to those veins and you want that to happen so you can increase your chances of getting them. Um, next, ask the patient where's the best spot to stick you because patients, a lot of them, they've been in the hospital a lot. They go and get blood drawn regularly and they know their sweet spots. So ask them, say, hey, I'm going to start an IV on you. Where do people normally get it or where can I get it? And this has helped me so much because patients know their bodies a lot better than we do. And next, pick a good vein in a popular spot. Popular spots that usually have great veins are the antecubital area, which is this area up in here, and um, the hand. Typically, the forearm isn't my favorite. Some people love it, but um, they tend to be a little bit deep, that you have muscles that run along there. But the AC and the hands are great. So always look there first. So whenever you're practicing, feeling on your own veins, feel there. And usually in every human, the veins are in the same location because we're all designed the same. Um, another thing is to stabilize that vein. Please watch my video on how to prevent a rolling vein because that's one of the biggest reasons people miss is because they go in, they didn't stabilize that vein from rolling and it moved. I like to compare it to this. Say you're fishing and you're trying to hook a worm onto your fishing hook so you can fish. Well, you have the worm, it's moving and you're trying to get the hook. You're going to have to hold and stabilize that worm before you can hook it. And it's the same concept with a vein. You've got to Hold that vein and stabilize it. And in that video, I'll go over how to do that. So check that out. Um, next, learn your equipment. Um, some people, they love to use butterflies. I'm not a butterfly person. I think it takes too much 
hand work and I'm a straight, I like to use the straight IV, which is what I just showed you. So learn how your equipment works and learn how to use one hand when you're having to peel that tape, when you're having to pop that tourniquet off and everything, because that's really the hard part about starting an IV or drawing blood is that you only have one hand to work with. So practice. And last but not least, practice, practice, practice. It took me about a year to get good at IVs and um, if I didn't practice, I wouldn't have got good at them. So even though if you totally stink at them and you're not good, still practice because I promise you will learn it. It's something you have to learn. It's not something we're born with. It's something that you got to practice. So I hope that helped you out on common reasons people miss faint. Thank you so much for watching and please check out my other YouTube videos and subscribe to this YouTube channel.